is. Perfect. I remembered how to do it first time. Uh, but yeah. They, uh, well, she, sorry, she is got some very creative homebrew uh, subclasses. This one is based off of Alucard. Uh, I believe more towards the recent Castlevania animated series rather than the games itself. But it's, uh, as you can see in the title, it's an oath. It is one of the Paladin subclasses. It was, uh, very interesting. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna... Why are you, why do you keep insisting I need to be signed in? Just shut up. Just shut up. Okay. Uh, sorry. And anyway, got proper window. Yeah, beautiful. This would be, uh, let's see on the credit scheme. Uh, by Mama Burger, or, uh, Amara Rose, depending on which, uh, I believe Mama Burger is the Not Safe for Work Twitter account. Uh, but as you can see here, the cover image is of a Dampier Paladin, using, a uh, one of the powers of her Blood King Oath on the, on a Repair of Life Stealing. So it's, a uh, very fancy. And, uh, I think for this one, to give some context, it'd be better to talk about the subclass itself before getting into the neat little story, uh, Proca put to help advertise this one. So to start off with, uh, the theme of this subclass is a lot closer to a warlock patron, in that you make an oath to a specific person rather than to a selection of ideals. And uh, the nice little lore suggestions that Baraka has here, it's unfortunately on the same pages as the abilities of the subclass, so I can't show it. But uh, for the Forgotten Realms, there is uh, on the continent of Faerun and beyond, multiple vampire lords and ladies scheme and plot against one another, often with mortals caught in the crossfire, a cowed or protected by the various blood kings. One group in particular, the Sunstar Order, seeks to eradicate cruel vampires who oppress mortals, while shepherding those who work to control their ghoulish thirsts. Building into that, they, I mean, they pretty much said, here's a suggestion, multiple vampire lords that could be the source of this. And here's one, the Sunstar Order specifically, who is trying to get rid of the ones that are outright evil. Because, uh, you know, it's a lot easier to exist if people aren't going to try and just stake you in the heart when you go out and you're a scroll for groceries, you know? Uh, or let's see. No, on the very fitting of Ravenloft. Blood kings can be found in several of the domains of Dread. In Barovia specifically, they serve under Strahd von Zerovich, or the cadre of vampire lords that attend him. Meanwhile, in Darkon, they are mainly comprised of Dampier members of the, the Cargatane. In Icath, they are granted powers by Sien Xian. Oh god, I, I probably butchered that, but and they uh, work in tandem with Zhangxi forces, which I think is the Chinese version of a vampire, if I remember that bit of lore correctly. Uh, yeah, it's, like I said, this oath is more to a specific person rather than a collection of ideals like the other subclasses. Which, if you've seen some of my other homebrew reviews, I do like me some of uh, subclass theming or lore that kind of blends between multiple classes. Kind of changes what's exactly expected of them. It's also very fun to play. Uh, but yeah, it starts with a the first ability at third level uh, being called Blade of Dusk. It allows you to change the damage of your smite which is very fun, but also the Channel Divinities, one of which letting you do the classic vampire ability of changing to a swarm of bats with a couple weaknesses, but also a couple strengths. But the Divinity I prefer, which allows for one full minute every time you use a Defined Smite, allows you to heal the Thirsting Smite, this Divinity is called. And I just chef's kiss and delicious. Uh, the one thing I don't like about it is it is more of a just flat healing, 
which feels a little... I mean, from a player's perspective, I can see that feeling is not very good. Because if you drop a third level smite on someone, but you're still getting the same healing as you do from a first, it, it suddenly feels like, a, like you could be doing more. Mechanically speaking, I mean, you're getting free healing on top of that expended slot. I mean, the only difference is just that added effect. It is no less powerful than other Divine Smites. But, uh, perhaps in exchange for a lower overall rate, just it increasing step by step could be a way to make it so players feel more rewarded for it. It's one of those little things where making it weaker can make it feel more powerful for a player. But there's, there's nothing wrong with it. It's all about how the player enjoys such a, abilities. Uh, and the spells, I mean... Most of these feel very fitting, either for the kind of patron aspect of it, like Hex or Misty Step, or the obvious ones that vampires should get for Vampire I think. Uh, vampire Touch, uh, Dominate Person, it's like, again, great selection of spells for that. Rock is, uh, once again, hitting that out of the park. Uh, let's see. Uh, and then kind of building off of that, the uh, other channel of Divinity, Sanguine Swarm, where you turn to a swarm of bats, the 7th level ability, Fangs of Darkness, gives you some more things that you can turn into. And uh, I think the way they did it, it definitely looks like it's based off the dru yeah, Druid's Wild Shape to some degree, but it's much more constrained. Uh, because you're getting to keep your Intelligence, Wisdom, Charisma, makes sense. The uh, vampire still has their brain, even if they don't have the same brawn. Uh, the one thing some people are probably going to dislike about that feature is you can't Divine Smite. But I think the benefits they add to the monstrous forms more than make up for the detriment of not getting to Divine Smite and heal while you're in that form. I mean, it's extra health. It's, uh... Yeah, I mean, it, it's extra health. It's a great thing about Wild Shape and some more usable forms than a typical druid would be used to. Uh, sadly, it's only once per rest, but you know, again, you're not a druid and you're getting a temporary Wild Shape, that's fine. Let's see, the two big abilities being Kindred of the Knight at 15th level and the 20th level Blood Knight, once again, look great. Uh, I think I can talk about 15th, because it is more of a ribbon ability like a lot of the subclasses are. It just slows your aging, gives you some resistance. It, it's not a big thing, but it's definitely in line with the flavor of a vampire. So once again, chef's kiss. Great choice. The one thing I don't like about the 20th level feature, it gives you a... Hmm, what's it called? Uh, it gives you an ability, it's pretty much a mixture of an aura effect and one of those spells that like change you, what is it, uh, I know there's a druid form where you can choose between a tree form or something else gives you a bunch of bonuses and alternate attack things, it kind of feels like that, and I just, mm, it feels like it is the best way they could form this ability they were thinking of, this ultimate vampiric lord form. And I get that. It just... Uh, I'm not sure how it improve it. It doesn't feel weak. It just feels strange for a paladin. But, you know, if you're getting to 20th level anyway, I think it is on par with other 20th level uh, capstone features for paladins. I do agree with that. Uh, it's just not something I would have expected for a uh, a knight of a vampire lord. Like, just on the flavor side of things, it feels like, why would the lord give them this much power, you know? Uh, but like I said, I mean, in the other point, it looks like it'd be hella fun for players. I, I will give it that. It's uh, very fun for players. Uh, let's see, I believe there's one other... Oh, right, and the story itself. Actually, before that... I still have the link to this. Just so I have that ready. No, I don't. So I will uh, look that up later. 
But for the story itself, let's go ahead and see what Cruentus Noctis has for us. Okay. <clears throat> Panting heavily as he ran, the thick, humid air of Corvair's summer choked his every gasp. Like the hangman's noose, he raced to avoid. Sweat beating on his brow as he scampered through alleyways, darting through side streets. Pedestrians yelped and shouted in annoyance as he sped by, cursing him as he fled. He had to keep moving. He couldn't slow down. If he so much as stumbled for half a second, they'd be on him. No, she would be on him. And then, all of their plans would be for naught. The thought drove him forward as he shoved a well-dressed couple aside, ignoring the shrill cry of the woman as her lover screamed at him in anger. Changeling shaking their fist at him as he ran on, barely sparing them a moment's glance over his own shoulder. Blurry at the edge of his vision, his heart leapt into his throat as the shadow seemed to dart across his gaze. Further than before, she was falling behind. Just a little further, he urged his legs as he ran, pleading with them to ignore the burning muscles that threatened to collapse out from under him. Shutting out the thoughts of failure, he nipped the edge of his mind like rabid hounds. He skid around a corner, bolted up a fire escape. She sought him in the streets. Perhaps it was best to keep it that way. Abandoned the pavement of a higher ground, let her lose herself in the crowds of Sharn while he fled across the rooftops above, far out of her reach. He couldn't help but feel a smile tug at the edge of his mouth. Finally, relief was in sight. The past 24 hours ran through his mind as he ascended, rung after rung, retracing step after step that he had led to his current state as a wanted man. How it had all gone wrong. The meeting at the safe house and the catacombs. The plans for the assault on Counselor Carissa's offices in the lower central. The Inquisitor's raid. And that woman. He could never forget her eyes, how they burned with a crimson fire tainted by umbral wisps of necrotic power as she tore through his comrades. The Emerald Claw had trained them well. They seasoned fighters to a man. And the, that woman gripped through them like white paper. Not even the bone <clears throat> night that they had been given by their cells leader did so much as slow her down he was lucky enough to have fled when he did, even if he had caught her attention. <laughs> Let's see how that crazy witch looks run around, Sean on a wild goose chase for the rest of the night. He grinned in manic triumph as he finally reached the top, winded, out of breath, but alive. Sorry, but otherwise not. Uh, slowly, the adrenaline began to ebb and fatigue set in. He allowed himself a moment to catch his breath. Grasping his knees, Jeff's heaving for air. He knew he would have to meet up with the others. Inform their superiors that the plan failed. The Church of Vol was on to them. Those fools would do anything to stop their plans. Remained ignorant of their true place as masters of this world of sheep. Though they failed this night, the Emerald Claw would live to fight another day. The lilting echo of laughter froze him in place. His blood ran cold in his veins, eyes wide with fear. No. Well, well, well. It seems you finally decided to stop running, little rabbit. The woman's voice taunted him, dripping with amusement as it resounded across the empty air. I must say, you gave quite the chase there, up until the end. A whirl of mist rushed past him, sending him stumbling onto his hands and knees wincing in pain as the gravel cut into his palm. The swirling cloud coalesced into a single humanoid form before him, gaining substance and weight as heavy claw-shaped sabatons displaced the tiny stones beneath her feet. Night black armor, adorned with filigree, the likeness of bats shown in the moonlight, contrasting the paladin's own pale skin. Her blood-red cape snapped to the wind, like ominous wings, drawing the same wicked rapier that she had used to slay his allies. 
The Dampier bared her fangs in a sadistic grin as brackish crimson miasma flowed over the blade, crackling the necrotic energies of calling for the blood that flowed in his veins. In that dim light, the symbol of the blood of Vol could be seen engraved in her right pauldron. Now then, she mused with a smirk, she took up a fighting stance before this heretic. Where were we? Hmm? And with that, we have our uh, paladin right here on the cover. Uh, once again, absolutely worth buying. I will say this one, I'm a harder judge of character on Paladins. Because honestly, I've only played the one I'm currently playing. So I can't speak too well for the balance of the thing. Uh, but I would say, largely due to the lore reasons, uh, that this would probably be an 8 out of 10. Uh, just because vampires are not really a small thing to work into lore, especially the way the oath of this seems to imply they should. Larger organizations either working against them or with them. Uh, but mechanically, it looks sound. It looks balanced, at least in regard to the other classes I have played up to those levels. Uh, so yeah, it's still up there in the, you should get it if you have the money to spare. I mean, it's not, Baraka's works aren't too expensive. They're definitely worth the price, too, if you ever get the chance to make use of them. Meanwhile, I'll we'll quickly look up the, uh, direct link to this particular Oath of Blood King. Here we go. Just toss that into chat. Yeah, uh, pick it up if you're interested. So, like I said, it looks very good. But for now, I believe I need to turn off the background music for here and switch over to the game proper. So, uh, first we'll get the music, which has a little mis less music and more mysterious ticking sound. Uh, where's here? It is. This book is a dungeon. And for the screen. 